everyone. Welcome back to Mom and Jess Talk Show. It's a happy new year and in this light, I want to wish you all a happy new year, happy new 2023. Yes, when we start the beginning of the year, there are things that we look back at and you know, plans that we have for the new year. We wish to see how to attain success, fulfillment, and seek God's direction in all that we do. This is the reason why we start this series with the very first topic we titled Seeking God's Direction in Attaining Success. Success is not all about achieving maybe wealth and all that, you know, it's achieving purpose. You know, the purpose of your, your living, the why of your living. So on that note, I would love to introduce to you a very amazing, awesome, soap in the power of God. A woman of God, passionate about the things of God. Pastor Dr. Mrs. Ruth in the heart. Please, if you're watching, give her a round of applause. Sit back. I am sure I'm very certain you'll be blessed listening to her. I will pray the Lord will give you contrast. Please do well to Amen. you. So, Amen. 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 Hi everyone, welcome viewers, welcome to Mom and Jess and I am so glad to be here and thank you so much Doc for inviting me <laughs> and uh, I am here as she said, uh, Dr. Ruth, Pastor Ruth from Exalted Christ Church and I'm glad to be here to talk about seeking the things of God, seeking God's direction and I believe that this is going to be important for you as you will be starting the year or even in whatever you're doing, not only the year, whatever business you want to start or whatever academic or, or thing you want to pursue, everything has to have the purpose of God linked to what you want to do. You need to seek the direction of God. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much once again. We're excited. I'm sure the viewers are. Just before we start, please just remember to Click on the subscription button to keep you in line of subsequent and interesting and insightful, exciting episodes to come. Sit back, relax, let's get into this discussion. Amen. Welcome once again, Pastor Ruth. Thank so you. let's start. The topic is um, seeking God's direction. I think we'll probably start by understanding, you know, what um, direction is all about and um, you know, what it takes, what it actually means, actually, and what it means to seek God's direction. All right. So what I believe uh, seeking God's direction means is that you are, before you do anything, you are going in and you are saying, God, what must I do here? Which way must I go? So it's like you are standing right in front of a road. Maybe it's three paths that are there, but you are saying of the three things that are in front of me, God, where am I supposed to go? Where is my purpose? Where should I move to? Because I believe most times we just do things just out of nowhere without us really asking God, is this the direction that I should take? Is this the route that you want for me to take? And when we take our own route, then we start crying, ah, but God, you left me. But sometimes the Holy Spirit even was within you telling you, ah, you are taking a wrong turn here. And then you just say, let me just go, let me just go. So it's like you're on a road, you're driving from there, then maybe to Johannesburg. And you need to know which direction you are going to. And most times in the natural, what do we do? We take our map or GPS and you first look to see, okay, am I going in the wrong direction? And then when you see that the GPS says, yes, this is the road, mm -hmm. then you go. That's the same way that we, we, we are, 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 are as children of God, that we should have the Holy Spirit and God as our GPS, that before we leave our homes or anywhere, mm -hmm. then we put the GPS of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and then he will be the one to direct us. Like that woman that says, now you can turn left in 300 meters, then Holy Spirit will also tell you in 200 meters, in 30 days, wow. Ruth, you need to turn left because so you have also to be attuned to him. But if you mute your GPS, it will be there, but your direction will be lost. So that's how it is that you are driving. So you see it in that way that is the GPS of the Holy Ghost, and he is directing you. But the key is are you then listening to the voice that's speaking or are you even looking at that GPS or you are just saying, let me go, I'll see wherever it lands me. So that's how I would define wow. the direction that one has to take following the purpose of what God has said for each and every wow. one of us. Interesting viewers, this is very mind blowing. You know, using the essence, using the example of the GPS, it brought me back to some time ago where I had um, an experience where the Holy Spirit was teaching me something 
I'm learning on something and I keep doing what I feel is right, not what the Holy Spirit wants. Mm -hmm. And then I came back like with a repentant heart to God. I was like, God, what's wrong now? Mm -hmm. You know, just as you said, you know, sometimes we mute the Holy Spirit. Yes. And then just like the GPS, it's just give you like when you take a wrong direction, it will mm -hmm. you. Yes. Yeah, and then rerouting is taking you more time. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better viewers as we listen to Pastor Ruth, which was to that question, to be in line, to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, to save us time. And you know, it will help us grow better. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Moving on, Pastor, we really understand, you know, why you think it's important to seek God's direction in all our endeavors. All right. Why it's important for me, I am one person that's going to say it just right, straight, and with no ascension. There is nothing one can do without God. That's it. So you need to seek God, and God is not a part, should not be a part-time individual in your, mm. in your life. Or when you most times when things are wrong, that's when we they come to seek the direction of God. No. God has to be the center of mm -hmm. your life. The word of God says that be the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. So he has to be the essence and the core. Because the word says that we were created in his image. So he should be the first right. point of call okay. in our lives. First point of contact in everything. He should be the emergency and only emergency contact that we have mm -hmm. in our life as children of God. So it's very important to have him because then we are not of this kingdom. This, yes, we have the flesh, but we are not of this kingdom. So right. we have to report to who? To him who is in the heavenly realm. So that means he has to be the one that gives us direction. So it's important that we follow what God says. Yes, God wants us to do things. Each person has a different thing that God has set for them. So it's important for you to seek that out so that you can begin to walk in what God has said for you. We all know that scripture in Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I, I already knew you. Yeah. So you have to seek then what God has said for you because you have something that God has already deposited on the inside of you. Wow. So it's important for you to seek that God, that you already knew me. It says in the word, he knew the end. He, he, he speaks the, the end. He knows the end. Before what? The beginning is already yeah. there. So the end, God already knows it. Yeah. And you have to then seek that God let me begin to walk in that which you have spoken already about me. So when you are doing that you are now seeking the purpose of God so that you can align with the ending of what God has spoken in your life. So most times if you don't do that you will die like as Mary Monroe said that without having fulfilled the purpose that God has set in your life because you are not seeking that which God has said for you. It's wow. good to run around for money nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need money, we need all. But in those things, seek also the things of God so that you just don't have money on earth, but you don't have anything seated in the heavenly realms, in the spiritual kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the importance of why we have to seek because we are of the kingdom of God right. and we have to fulfill what the word of God says and fulfill mm -hmm. the purpose mm -hmm. that God has said for each and every one of mm -hmm. you. And maybe someone might be listening to me to say, huh? Do I also have a purpose? It's for everyone. Let Absolutely. me tell you that it's not for pastors. You say, ah, well, you're saying that because you are pastor. No, it's not for pastors. Right. It's, not. I love no, that. it's not. Yes, it's for everyone. Absolutely. It's for everyone. The word says, go ye therefore and preach the gospel. It's saying ye therefore. It's not saying go ye pastor, go ye evangelist. Everyone has the purpose of God that is a set for them and you must then go in and follow it. Be a young boy, you are listening to me young, you say at 10 years, Jesus was 12, he was in the temple. You say, I'm, I'm this and that. You can fulfill the purpose of God as you are, wherever you are. Thank Amen. you so much, Pastor. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I'm sure someone who are right there watching is being blessed already. Pastor Ruth gives it as it flows <laughs> from the Spirit, Amen. from the throne of grace. Oh wow! So I, I I just something caught my attention in why you were speaking, you know about you know knowing what God has created you for, mm. and you refer to us, you refer to Jeremiah, mm. he knew us already, mm. you know. But for people that um, are not able to probably define or know exactly the will of God for them, mm. you know, um, the world is full of distractions. Yes. There are tendency that someone is doing this, you want mm. to do what the person is doing, probably the person is effortlessly doing it and mm -hmm. being successful mm -hmm. and then you just get caught up with you know the rat chase doing mm -hmm. what everyone is doing. Mm -hmm. How exactly does one begin to know the will of God for himself? Mm -hmm. 
or her son. All right. So the first point of order is you need to pray. Right. Prayer is very important because when you get into the prayer room, that's when God will also start to have conversations with you mm. so that you can begin to understand what am I going to do with mm. this particular thing. Right. Anyway, secondly, reading the word of God. So when you read the word of God, you get to know because that's the will of God. There is no other will of God that you get anyway, apart from what's in the word of God. Mm. So if you get into the word of God and it says that you are the head and not the tail, that becomes the will of God over your life. So you have to begin to speak that into being and it begins to work in your life. And the other thing as well, as, as in your question, if I'm doing it, because some people think, well, I don't know what I should really do, so what's God do? Sometimes God gives you a, a gifting or something that you are passionate about. Hmm. And then when you pray about that, you actually start to realize that, okay, this is the thing that God has good right, for my life. So you right. can begin to work with it. Hmm. I remember one of the day we have our Bible study sessions that we have every Wednesday. And we were talking about how the, if the Holy Spirit can now use the giftings that we have now or the vocations we have now for the edification of the kingdom of God. Hmm. And then I was like, I am a lawyer by background. And I said, yes. Well, but the reason why you actually study. Law. Yes, and then like I started to read the word of God to start to find where issues of law were coming from. And I'm like, the daughters of Zelophehad Zelophe went to Moses and said, You know, our father died, but we need to get um, the inheritance that's due to us. And God specifically gave Moses a succession uh, 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 in, uh, laws there and said, It applies to these children because they should inherit. And that's what we have now in succession law, interstate law, where one passes on without a rule. So that is a gift that I can say in that field of law that I am in, God can use me as one to push the purpose and the agenda of the kingdom of God within that particular area. So you might not necessarily uh, 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 go in and maybe have an encounter. Some people do have an encounter with the Holy Ghost and they are called for to say, go in, start this thing. But within that particular job or whatever you have had your passion on to do now, you can use that as the purpose that God has given. It can become the will of God. What I believe is that sometimes God will come to you and speak to you directly, do this, and then sometimes God will lead you according to what you are doing there and there, mm -hmm. and then the Holy Spirit will begin to lead you to say, move and go this way. Mm -hmm. See, so there are so many instances when we see the Word of God, when people were diverted from the things that they ought to have been doing, right. and then God then changed them and said, no, move here. So we see right. Saul is going in to be a killer, but God is diverted, exactly. but he was already working at something. So you, you don't have to necessarily sit and say, okay, but I need that, but boom, heaven, open, come. Mm -hmm. What you are doing there, you can say, God, There's show me. Yes, there is something. Mm -hmm. Show the purpose that we have deposited in me with this thing. If I'm selling those tomatoes by the road, may the power of God be seen. As I speak to people, maybe I don't say anything, but I just pray in the Holy Ghost. And when I hand them over that, then God will begin to work something. So whatever you are doing, whatever you are doing, there is a purpose. Yes, find a purpose in it because God has given each and every one of us a purpose. We might not all come and stand on the pulpit, but wherever you are, in the pews, in the marketplace, wherever, in the school where you are, you are a candidate to fulfill the purpose mm -hmm. that God has given for you. So begin to look in the word and say, what is the purpose that I have? The word says that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. The sons and daughters will prophesy, which yes. means you can even prophesy. It doesn't yes. matter yes. that you are called prophetess or prophet, but you can begin to speak the word because mm -hmm. you are acting on what the word of God is saying and you are doing it even within the comfort of where you are working, where you are selling in your business. So we need, in this 21st century, we need to re-change our mindset in terms of how things were done. Because sometimes we just only want to let it be like how it was in the Bible. And we, but times have changed. That's why you say, yes. And we, now in, in, in COVID, we, we saw change. Now people were not having uh, physical changes. We are now in, in, in virtual changes. But still the power of God was moving. Mm -hmm. Because we are moving and uh, uh, changing with time, with and, time and season. But the word of God will still remain true and the same. Absolutely. So that's the same thing as now. So I think that's what I can say. So don't limit yourself to say, ah, well, I don't know. You can do anything where you are placed right now in that place that God has Thank you so much for that emphasis. And speaking of um, Saul, you know, I was just listening to... I don't know if you know him. Yes. Some days back, he was talking about the power of purpose, mm -hmm. and he mentioned how Saul was using his purpose for the wrong reasons. Yes. But one thing stood out for Saul he mm -hmm. was diligent. Mm -hmm. He was killing, but killing with diligence, <laughs> with power, with energy, yes. with everything. He had that mm -hmm. uh, passion, zeal, zeal. Yes. And then God. Called 
converted as mm -hmm. glory to God Amen. for the right purpose. The right purpose. God can do that for you. Amen. You might be doing something that it might be in a business that mm -hmm. you know is not pleasing to God, mm -hmm. or something that does not give glory to God. I tell you that gift and talent, God can still turn it around Amen. for your good and for your purpose. Amen. You just have to seek Him. May Amen. God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Moving on, I just um, I find this question quite um, interesting. Um, because um, I can relate to it. Mm -hmm. I understand that there are certain people that, you know, God will speak to them about a certain direction to take and it actually might not make sense. Mm -hmm. That leading he's giving you might not make sense in society. Mm -hmm. Even logically it might not make sense. Mm -hmm. How do you begin to encourage yourself to pick yourself up and not seeking people's validation, just go with the direction as God has spoken. In those instances where something has been spoken, and in fact, majority of the times I've never seen where God will tell you something that is, and, and yeah, there are times when it's that simple, mm. like just okay, it's simple, and no, most of the things that's why the word says the things of God are foolishness to the world, absolutely. Because when you look at it, you're like, huh? that doesn't this, make sense, it doesn't, yes, right. it doesn't. So, in those instances, what you need to have is to have built yourself up spiritually mm. and, and have faith great deal of faith mm. for you to be able to do it because mm. faith is the substance of things what not seen right so when you are moving in those things where you have to do what god has said for you it means you are going in and you are just allowing the holy spirit to be the one that's driving you don't know how it's going to work you don't know how it's going to happen mm -hmm. but you just know i am going and i know that god is going to perfect it and god is going to do it so you have to say i have to have faith that is strong so that i'm able to push forward and go in and most times let me tell you it will not make sense for you it will it will seem like it's 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 crazy mm -hmm. then people will be like ha! if you tell them they're like hi 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 this is sure sure going to work here and people will definitely discourage you mm -hmm. but what you do is you must do like david it says that i encourage he encouraged himself in mm -hmm. the lord he had to encourage himself he and he had to go in and then here to push forward, encouraging them, knowing that I know the God that called me. He called me when I was there down in the, the gutters with the with the sheep and I was dirty, but he anointed me. So I know that what he has spoken to me, he is faithful and just to fulfill it. So you begin to encourage yourself. And second thing, when we see that Saul uh, went to inquire of the donkeys that were lost with his servant, they went to the storm of the men of God and then the, the, the inquired. But the men of God then had a word for Saul. And then what did he tell Saul? He said, tell your servant to pass and go because I have another word that God has spoken to me that I need to release right. to you. The second thing is that we know people who always speak and say something to discourage you. So it's time for you to have that servant or whoever is around you to go so that you can stay behind on your own and have an intimate time with the Holy Ghost so that you shut off those negative things that come because I'm sure the servant will tell right. ah, you are crazy. You right. being the king, I it can't happen because he knew the circumstances of 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 of, of the of so at that time and he said ah maybe you would have said maybe you can't qualify ah you are too tall for this and stuff right. but then the men of God said let your servant go back so I can release the word so there are times even when you are going with the purpose of God you don't need the crowds most times we saw Jesus would take himself off from the crowds and he would go in and he would pray because if he had told the disciples that the first time that I'm going to be crucified they would have told him ah bro you can't do this even Peter is okay to take a soul to cut it off from the, mm -hmm. the ear of the other person. Why? Because he did not understand the purpose that God had set for Jesus, that his right. name would then be raised to be a name above every other name. Right. So there are times where even the clauses of friends like the disciples Jesus said might be a hindrance in following the purpose that God has set for you. So once you encourage yourself, begin to identify who are the wrong people in my crowd that I need to let go right. so that I begin to walk in the purpose that God has set for me. Because most people have a purpose, but what has been said in me is that they have not fulfilled it because they have had a person that has taken them off from the purpose oh, that God has given them. See, Samson met a beautiful Delilah, beautiful as she was, but what did she do? She he, she took him from the purpose that God had set for him, and his hair was cut off. Why? He now could not run in the purpose because he got mixed with the wrong crowd. Right. Which crowd are you mixing with as you are rising and encouraging yourself to run 
in the purpose that God has set for you. Mm -hmm. You need to separate yourself and say, God, I am here, direct me. Because there are times, even Moses, he would go and inquire of the Lord. He would leave all of them down by, under the, the mountain. He would climb up yes, and yes, and go and have intimate relations with the Father. So that when he comes back in, his face was shining. Glowing. But and glowing, yes, but how he left everyone, Aaron, Miriam, Joshua, all of them and the elders, they stayed behind so that he could hear directly from God. So you need to have this time of separation. You need mm -hmm. to be separate. You need, yes, you can have people that, they are powerful people that can stand with you and pray right, with you. Right. But be careful. Are you having a medium? Are you having a, an Aaron that is going to push you away? Because what I wonder, you see, Doc, is Miriam and Aaron were there when uh, Moses told them the commission that God had said and the right. purpose. But the moment he went into the, 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 the mountain to meet with God, within a few minutes they had been convinced to make a golden calf. So and there are people know. that can be convinced and can divert your attention mm. so that you don't get to the purpose. And now Moses is coming. He's like, how, how, what is happening what is here? Happening? What has happened? You know what God has spoken mm. to me because God said, I will be a God to Aaron. Yeah, and you're going opposite. So you need to be careful of those. You need to know that when you are going in this purpose, yes, sometimes it might not make sense. Find people that will understand the word that God has given for you and move with those. Those that don't, then say, God, I'm separating. You don't hate mm -hmm. anyone, no. You just mm -hmm. separate yourself Quietly, to them. Yes, to them as well. The purpose uh, that God has for you. Thank you so much, Pastor mm -hmm. Ruth. I, and I'm very happy you brought this out because I tell you, you don't find everyone mm -hmm. going in line and agreeing with what mm -hmm. God has laid in your heart to do. Mm -hmm. But we thank God for what they call the sentence mm -hmm. and conviction. Mm -hmm. I think conviction does it for me mm -hmm. because I've had countless, countless, countless times People have said no, and that this is not going right. This mm. is, but that conviction mm. kept me going. Mm. So we pray the Lord will help us with the conviction. Yes, sometimes we go out of line, but when you have, when you're in tune, like you said, Moses was always visiting, mm. and I think that intimacy will also help us when we sometimes, you know, get off track a bit. Mm. He's able to pull us out, but that intimacy with the Father is mm. very important. Thank you, Pastor Ruth, for, you know, I think you covered everything in life is seeking direction. I think the last question we'll have is just for you to help us understand what steps we need to take in accessing, you know, um, God's guidance in terms of direction. This is a new year. What steps do we begin to take? All right. So, as I said before, this year, as you're starting it, if you were not reading your, your, your Bible last year, start start. This year is the year for you to read the word of God. Because the majority of the people we have in the kingdom, mm -hmm. they only know the word when the pastor opens the Bible mm -hmm. on the Sunday. They don't have a personal relationship with the right. word. So the word is the Bible they have at home. It's just logos that is there, but it's not a revelation mm -hmm. that they have that is running on the, the inside of the inside. Inside. Yes, that's coming from the inside. Because then when you have that revelation there, the purpose of God will become so clear because mm -hmm. the word is a ignorant witness within you. Mm -hmm. So you need to chew on the word. That's why it says to, to Joshua, meditate on this word day right. and night. Right. But nowadays we meditate. Now you're saying it's the year that's and you're meditating on a series, you're meditating on the news, you're meditating on WhatsApp or Twitter or TikTok, on and, you're on the, and you're not meditating on the word of God at all. So what begins to come out of you as you watch your purpose? The thing, the water film that you've seen is what begins to come out of you because that's what is feeling the inside of you. So, yes, yeah, so you need to have your the word of God so full in you that it's shut up in your bones. That, that's the first thing that comes out whenever anything is coming. You see, I, can I make it? But you can say, okay, the word that comes with God, all things are possible. I can do all things. Because that's the word that has been incubated on the inside of you and it will begin to push you to the purpose of, of what God has said for you in this year. And secondly, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. More so if you're listening to me and you don't speak in tongues, that's something that God has given to us for every believer. Open your heart and say, let me begin to have communion more with the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit begins to minister to you, it will begin to tell you particular things that will move you to go somewhere. You know, I've had so many places, how does the Holy Spirit speak to you? 
Yeah, and it's like that people expect maybe a thunder like a <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit. You know, it's sometimes it can just be a silent and you know in, in the something that will tell you, Ruth, don't wear that purple jacket today. And then that's simple. It. Simple. And then I wear that big purple jacket and then I go in 30 minutes after it's so scorching what and I'm like, hey, I should have left it off. But the Holy Spirit I was told you where told you already that no no no, this is not simple as that. Simple as that. So the things of God are so simple. Once you tune yourself in, especially to the Holy Spirit, I tell you, there are some things you won't do, and then you will just at the end you will realize, ah, wow, this is exactly what the Holy Spirit was just saying. Mm. Because he will give you things, a word, as I was telling you, Doc, for our conference that we had. I was saying, God, what am I going to have? He just gave a word. Mm. And after we had that conference, people were coming to say, you know what? This is exactly what I needed. The oh testimony is, and I was thinking, why am I saying this? Glory but I God. spent my time just praying in the Holy Spirit, and you know, just there was a yes, there was a revelation that came. Mm. So when you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, mm. he, the Holy Spirit is not gimmick; He is real. Mm. And when you have fellowship with Him, I tell you, He will guide your path. And things will just begin to happen as you follow his direction. So yeah. that's very important. When you wow. walk with the Holy Spirit, I tell you, you will you will never be lost, but you will walk never in the go wrong. You will never you go will wrong. Never you, will, you will never ever go wrong because he will direct you into the truth and that's what you will do, the real truth, and you will begin to walk in the right purpose as well as you have the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit in you. Yeah. Amen. Pastor Ruth, I am blessed. <laughs> and I know viewers have been blessed. Amen. I need to watch this again. I don't know about <laughs> you. Pastor Ruth has given us powerful knowledge here. You know, your work with God, the work with the Holy Spirit, it's, it's just covers everything in mm. summary you know even when the reality does not look like it mm. even when you don't have money in your purse mm. there's this peace mm. there's this peace there's this i don't know i can't explain it yes. well god i'm doing what you said mm. and you're so happy mm. and it even gets to a point for me mm. like when things actually go wrong and i know i'm actually doing what god i'm mm. like god but what's going on now mm. <laughs> look now what mm. and he speaks to me he yes. tells me Okay, this is what you need to do. Mm. I realized that everything that he actually happened, that he made happen was for a reason. For a, reason. a little delay was for a reason. Yes. You know. Yes. So if you ask me that the same one, mm. let's just listen to Pastor Rote. Mm. Meditate on the words, the nugget, the utterance that the Holy Spirit has made through her. And we wish you all a happy new year. God bless you. See you next episode. Bye. Bye.